It's Friday, February 23rd, 2024. To, I almost forgot. That. Uh, I got an email before we get into the show because I'll forget if I go through the whole show. So, but I, I, I meant to, I meant to bring this up. I got we got an email, okay, uh, from a listener who said that Google Podcasts is shutting down because Google sucks, and so was asking. I think the question was, is there a player that that we use that we recommend for podcasts. Now I'm on Android Landos on iOS, so we can have two different answers here on iOS. It's probably going to be Apple podcasts. Um, I don't know if you use something besides that for oh, Android. So Apple, so Apple is shutting. Oh, so, no, no, Google okay, is Google so, is Google, Google is. is. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, honestly, I liked it when the, when the podcasts were just included in iTunes, I think it's so stupid that they like separated them out. Yeah. I'm not but, a big fan of it either. Yeah. But yes, I have, I have used the Apple Podcast app. Okay. Uh, I also very often go directly. Depends on what, what I'm doing, but if I'm on my computer, I'll try to go direct to their site, whoever it is. Uh, yeah, I do that too. Um, I have, and I have used YouTube as well if they're on YouTube. The problem with the direct from website is if you stop yeah. listening, it doesn't remember it. That's the problem. So it doesn't have a memory. Most websites do not have a memory if you don't make no, it through I the just, whole show. No, I usually, I usually write down the timestamp if I yeah. come back later. So that's where a podcast player has an advantage because I, I often jump between three or four depending on what space I'm in and what I'm, you know, what I'm in the mood to listen to. So I will actually hop yeah. between them uh, also because a lot of the ones I listen to are longer. So it's, it's easier to chunk them up. So I use on Android – I use uh, Podcast Addict, which is free, and then I believe there's a pro version, which I paid for because it was dirt cheap, but the free version, to my knowledge, does everything. I think there's just ads in it. Uh, yeah, there's ads in it if you don't pay for it, and I paid for it because it was not, I, I want to say it was $3. Which is nothing for a good podcast app. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing. People people get crazy about that stuff, but honestly, if you think about what desktop apps cost, it's really not bad. No, so. if it's a good app, pay for it. It is. I've used that one for probably well, it's probably going on ten years now. I'd have to look yeah. and see when I actually bought it, but uh, but I that one's perfectly fine. There's lots. I think uh, I'm trying to remember. Is Overcast? Overcast generally has a good reputation. Is that one on? That one is an iOS app. So for iOS, Overcast, I've heard good things about. And also Pocket Casts, I believe, I've also heard good things about. That one might be both. That one is both. So if you want a unified player that you could use on whatever device, whether it's Android, because there are people who have, like I do, I have an iPad and then I have my Android phone. So if you just wanted one that, as far as I could tell, syncs, uh, then probably something like Pocket Cast, because Podcast Act is Android only. Which is fine because, like you, I use Apple Podcasts when I'm on a Apple device. The, the only thing is, though, that does not sync across to Podcast Addict. So if I start a show and I stop in an hour, I have to then skip to an hour in the other one. Dude, so. I, I'm, so, I'm so I am so old school. I just write the timestamps down. <laughs> no, you can, but 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 it is very nice. That's why I think Pocket Cast generally gets the a lot of people like that one because it's multi platform. Yeah. And there is there is something nice to okay, you write it down, what happens if you forget or you walk out or whatever. 
to just be able to spin the thing back up and it's where you want. So I, yeah. I get why people want that. For me, it's it's never been a problem enough that I care. Yeah. Uh, although I have a couple of times gotten lost and I'm like, I have to kind of like skim, 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 and I've either overshot it or we have to hear some things. So would it be nice to have it unified? Sure. I don't care enough, though, because I usually listen to my shows in their entirety. And if I stop, it's I usually pay attention to where and I can remember. So that would be my suggestion. Uh, and all of those have free options. And then, a like I said, I know Podcast Act has ads if you don't pay for it, but it's minor. So you could try it. All the, all the important features are there. I think the only thing Podcast Addict is missing, uh, not missing, but the only thing that's different about it is the ads. You're paying just to get rid of ads, but you're not lose, you're not, there's no functionality or anything that, I, that, as far as I know, that's behind a paywall on those. They're just using advertising to subsidize is the it, free versions. Is it audio? Is it audio ads? No, it's it's in the app. Um, I, you know, I don't know app. because I paid. No, it'll be. I think it's visual in the app. I think it pops up right. on the screen. You have to hit the X. You know, that's what they usually are. Yeah. I don't think they insert. I don't think. I don't think they can do ad insertion like that with apps. I don't think they can manage that. Uh, shows will do it. There yeah. are shows that will have ad insertion, which is so. I mean, it's always the sign of a good show if they insert a pause for the ad to be inserted to it, just doesn't, it's like YouTube where it chops you, into things. Did you see that, that term that Cory Doctor was throwing around and shitification. And, and, oh, it's and beautiful. Shittification. Yeah. Oh no, that's, that's the hot term. It was the word of the year man. last year or something, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was reading about that recently and I was like, yeah, I was like, man, it's like, I, I, it, the, it's a funny term for a terrible process, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and for those who don't know, you should look it up. You should oh, definitely no, read about I, it because the, the examples the examples are abound. But but in essence, it's the idea that a company uh, brings in users by basically giving them what they want, and then they bring in uh, companies by giving them what they want, and then when they once they realize everybody's locked in, they essentially make it so that it sucks for everybody, and they suck as many profits as they can for their shareholders, and the website just gets shittier and shittier until people begin to finally. It becomes painful enough that people flock away and leave, at which point the program starts to die. Here it is. Here right. it is. He, I, I knew he broke it down in a very simple yeah. way. So a quote from him. Here is how platforms die. First, they're good to their users. Then they abuse their users to make things better for their business customers. Finally, they abuse the business customers to claw back all the value for themselves. Then they die. Yeah. That's in case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Which is what we're the, seeing in a lot of places right now. All of them. Oh yeah. I mean and and Wiki, the Wikipedia for the term gives you a lot of great examples. <laughs> mm, oh well, well cuz there are a lot of great examples. Yeah, well I mean Although they're not yeah. great. There just are a lot of examples. Yeah. But I mean, you know what? I'm glad that things die. Because oh, the yeah. whole no, idea yes. is yes. that if if you do bad, then it should die. You know, that, that was always I my did. issue with, with capitalism. Well, well, that, okay, except that yeah. we are now at a point where that doesn't happen anymore. No, because, because they bailed them out. Well, not that the, well, they bail them out and or companies buy competitors to stop them being better than themselves. So you still can't get away. So you still can't get away. Yeah. And that's where the consolidation yeah, of everything yeah. is a problem, which we're yeah. seeing. And the thing is, and that's and what's funny is that my wife, who's very sort of so practical, kind of walked out and she said, so just stop using the program. And I was like, that works some of the time. Like, she's right. Like, you know what? Twitter, just walk away from Twitter. You know? Um, well, and, the same with, and the same thing with, like, Amazon. Like, there's a lot of companies that it makes your life – like, Amazon's different from Twitter. Because you can walk away from Titter – Twitter – Titter. <laughs> Sorry. You can walk away. You can walk away. That's what he should have called it, right? He should have called it yeah. Titter. Um, you can walk away from Twitter and – you just won't get that kind of socializing anymore. Well, and that's something I, that you'll have to get used to. I would say that's not true because I have to keep using it because there's certain people I can only message through that because they they don't want to go to another platform. They don't have the it's fundamental problem with it that I do. Same thing with Facebook. There are yeah. numerous people I know who hate Facebook, but it's the only thing that their I, relatives the is, are I don't, on. I don't contact people like that. I just call them. Well, not everybody. Okay. Me and Len do not call each other. <laughs> We're not we're not that type. Okay. So we use Twitter because that he's fine being on there. Yeah. Because he really just uses it as a as a promotion engine. Yeah, no, and that's I get that. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's easy to say just stop using it, but it's but not that's what that I mean. That, but, Believe me, but if for I could certain not people, use Twitter, boy, would I stop. 
Yeah, but for certain people, you can. It depends on it depends on your usage of the thing, right? But if you're just using it for like you know a uh, 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 following celebrities and and looking well, for, of course, if it's a if it's a if, yeah, but that's that. But Amazon mentality. Amazon is a service that a lot of people use, especially like when I um I know that when I was living in Vermont, there were areas that were remote and people basically ordered stuff from Amazon in bulk because it was easier than having to to make the you know two hour drive to some place where they could you know buy a ton of shit for where for their you know to stock up their remote location so they they used amazon and like if you stopped using amazon and you couldn't necessarily find another website to do it all either you would have to find multiple websites to order things from which is one option or you just have to go out the front door and and make the drive to some place where you can stock up you know amazon made it so that it was they made it made themselves convenient enough that people stopped going out yeah do you know what i mean Sure. And so walking away from that, yeah, the the end the end shitification of the site does make it more annoying to use them. But for some people, like much like you have commented on Twitter, it's not painful enough for them to leave because the alternatives are still more of a problem. Yes. So. That's that's the that's where saying just stop using something. I yeah. look, I, I understand that in practice it's very tough to necessarily say that that's a, a an option for everybody it is not always. and the, and the other problem is that sometimes once you have something and it becomes normalized then suddenly you can't imagine what life is like without and this is a very strange thing for me because i never because i never got enthralled with social media i've always kind of been sitting on the outside looking at it going why is this a problem and i understand intellectually why it's a problem but i've never felt it that way so like kind of the weird thing so the the stanley cup thing right you've seen this right yeah all right i've, I've yeah i've heard of it yeah yeah you're not i'm sure you're not part of it i'm not but you've seen them all over the place right sure sure and i'm sure because you work in a school environment to, to some degree that you've seen them around in that environment oh right? yeah right my daughter's school her elementary school is full of them Suddenly, everyone had them. And my daughter, who is on social media, came to me and she was like, mm. what the hell is going on? And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, these fucking, and she doesn't, she's not cursing, but this is her tone. She's like, these fucking Stanley Cups. She's like, everybody's got one. She's like, what the hell is that all about? She's like, are they special? And I was like, no, they're just cups. And she's like, yeah, yeah. is that it? And we actually went to the store and she saw one and she like picked it up and she was checking it out and she was like, it's just a Yeti. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. what's the point? And I'm like, well, darling, I was like, this is your first encounter with a, 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 essentially a, what do you call it? It's not a meme. Well, it's okay. A, a, you, know it's a fad. What, you know what drove that, right? Do you know what the initial yeah. incident of it I th- was? Was it, a, was it a TikTok thing or something like that? No, well, it was, I think it got very popular there, but basically there was a house fire. Yeah. I, I believe it was a house fire, and then afterwards, the drink inside the Stanley Cup was still at the cold. temperature. Yeah, it was still cold. <laughs> I believe it was still cold. And so that, although this cup apparently had been somewhat popular anyway, although now, of course, people are like, well, wait a minute. It's not actually as good as people think it is because this well, is like these, anymore. Well, like these limited edition colors are selling for like 500 bucks on eBay. Like, right. all this crazy shit. And I'm like, it, but that it was just. That's what drove it up is yes the the stuff inside yeah. was and that, well it's so it's the demand the thing is that suddenly this thing has an inflated yeah. demand and right. and and the thing is like i, I was kind of watching it and whenever i see this stuff i always think of beanie babies because sure. that was the thing from our youth where like beanie oh, yeah. babies were like oh i'm gonna invest in beanie babies and i'll be rich forever and then you know mm-hmm. all of a sudden the, everything fell apart and it was like oh uh-huh. i spent my life savings on a bunch of stuffed animals this may not and have been like, the best idea exactly or like snap bracelets Fucking snap bracelets. Remember snap oh, bracelets when we were sure. like, what, we were in middle school. Suddenly oh, everyone had to I have remember. one. No, they came back. They came back uh, five or six had, years ago for the little had those, They came back. Yeah, those people who would have like seven or eight of them up their arms. Yep. You know? Eh. Yep. And then but the fabric these... would fray and then you'd get a nice big cut. Actually, oh, the plastic got underneath. Cut stitches yeah. in their head from one that had, you know, that, yeah, that like oh, popped man, off their yeah. arm and cut them. <laughs> so it's, these it's the stupidest these, thing these fads are very interesting to me and i i see them happen from the outside so i'm always sitting there going well this is interesting and it it, it, you know it's when you're outside the social media uh uh, machine 
you don't understand the point of it. And I know that I'm unique in that position because I don't, I don't socialize the way that people socialize. I don't, but I, I'm always looking at it going, geez, you're having these problems with it. Why not, you know, why don't you, why don't you just walk away? But there's people who've grown up with it. They can't imagine a life without this machine. Do you know? Sure. And like, yeah. it's very depressing to me because I feel like socially we are losing skills that we've had, that we've always had. Right. And to take it one step further. So, you know, the, the Apple glass thing, the Apple goggles came out, right? Um, have you read any, any of the early reviews for that thing? Oh, are you, are you kidding? Almost every friggin' tech thing I listen to, it's just saturated. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so um, yes, I've seen, I've heard and seen much of it. Yeah. So, uh, so I've read some interesting, I, honestly, what I've read the most is that watching movies on it is pretty cool. That that's honestly the best review I've read of it ever. ever otherwise people are like, it's gimmicky. You know, it's not really there yet. This is the beginning of a technology, but it's not well, quite there. And yeah, you know. I, I did. A, I did a couple of fives on this. And one of the things that I am confused about, and a number of people have said this is yeah. why this was ever made available to the general public. Well, and that's I think that's why they buy. gave it. I think that's why they gave it such a ridiculous price tag. And the one oh, review no, no, I did no, read, no, no, the, the price tag is because it is cutting edge technology. So well, they they could not make it cheaper. But what they should have done, yeah, is made this a developer only thing for the first year. They should have said well, we, you know, because they're only selling so many. They're they're you know they're limiting it because they can only make so yeah. many screens because they are cutting edge screens. Yeah. So what and they you should have, have done to, was yeah. made and it you, a year. And of you food. and I have to get them prescription, by the way. Oh well, they, yes. Yeah. Well, even the people. And the other thing is, they're not thirty five hundred dollars. They're north of four thousand because well, yeah, thirty five hundred is just the headset, no prescription, no case, no accessories, no nothing. Yeah. So that's the other end of it. Is yeah. that, for us, know. I think I think the price is next for like eight hundred or something like that. But either yeah, way, something like that. But but I guess a bunch of psychologists and sociologists were had hands-on with this technology and they wrote a journal article based on their worries and opinions of what a future where this technology exists might have on people i think there's some biologists on there as well and they basically said it's a very impressive technology there are things that can be done with it the fear is that when people begin to wear these units and experience the world through a camera rather than actually looking at the world, they're like, you're going to get these changes that can have really profound effects. Like apparently when you experience the world through cameras and not through actually seeing it, you get no, you, you lose your depth perception and extended use of the Apple headset can actually really, really fuck with your ability to utilize your depth perception. Like, essentially, you take that thing off and suddenly your, your vision's like, whoa, wait a minute. And so they're talking about how there need to be limitations. Even before this thing is even made, like, you know, uh, cheap and, and available for everybody, they're sitting there going, hey, you really need to double th uh, double think this technology and the experience of people use, utilizing this technology um, for long periods of time. Because I the... the they didn't talk about this, but I immediately was thinking, yeah, because you have these parents who basically would be like, yeah, kid, stick this on your head and, and, and have it babysit you for a couple hours, right? And you're like, oh, right. So you have a, a, a developing child using a headset watching TV for the next three, four hours, like several times a week. And it's like, let's see what happens to their vision. You know, so it's like there is a there is a detriment to these technologies. And the more I learn... Well, the more I learn about everything, the more I see these detriments. And I sit there and I say, yeah, it's, it's really sad how we make these leaps and bounds, but we don't realize how far, how, how much we hurt ourselves in the process. You know, like, let's not even get to the plastics thing, which is fucking irritating as hell. Um, but yeah, just all these little things and all these little socio-psychological setbacks that we provide ourselves, like... I'm not sure social media has made up for its detriment to daily life. I I don't know. I, I, I think that certain aspects of it, like certain levels of the communication have made it better. But I don't know if by and large social media has 
uh, made a, a good case for itself as being something that has been overall positive for humanity. And maybe you disagree with me. You're further in it than I am. So I don't view opinion. it any differently than any other tool in this respect, in that I think that it has as much positive value as negative value as, as a tool. I, I mean, any number of people that I've had on the show that are now people that I consider friends, I mean, internet friends, certainly, but still, I mean, these are people I never would have met in the world otherwise. So, and also people are like, well, if they're not, you never met them in life. Well, okay. That's simplistic and reductive. I would never have met these people because they live thousands of miles away. So the yeah, chances we course, would have met yeah. anyway are, are nothing. So don't give me that. Yeah. But you know, are there, and these are, the, of course the, there are. and these are, the, and these are, the, and these are the positives, you know, so I mean, yeah, like, it's there hammer. are, it's a ham. I acknowledge that there are positive. It's just that I don't, I, you know, it's funny too, because you, you had mentioned to me that there's stuff that pops up. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in the first season of West Wing and there's stuff that pops up that you, you look at it now and you're like, wow, that was, uh, oh, that yeah. was very like kind of, uh, yeah. There's uh, an episode where they talk about how the internet Pri- will define the, privacy. You know, the, yeah. Oh, that yeah. one with the judge. So you've gotten to that one. Yeah. Where it's like all yeah, about yeah. privacy yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you're, yeah. and you're, yeah, and you're looking at that, and you're like, "Yeah," it's like, "Yeah, you guys, you somebody, somebody one. was, somebody was was reading things and and yeah. it had a good predictive sense of things." It's like, sure. "Yeah," and and the problem is that there are positives to it. There are positives to these tools. It's just that we're still trying to figure out how to balance the negatives. You know, like the, the yeah. Well, that's and that is the problem with any tool like this i mean you, you were as you said the vision pro the vision pro thing you know i i, I saw some of i that, wonder that, i wonder if this is going to be vaporware to be honest with you. i don't know if this is, I, well, I it, be it curious is to see vaporware if this... because this is not new we've had these vr headsets as many people have pointed out you can do 90 percent of this with existing ones and is the resolution sharper? Sure. Do most people yeah. care? Not even a little bit. No, not because it's not like for five or six hundred bucks. Yeah. You know? And my question is, you know, how, how many people really want to be gargoyles? Well, what, uh, no, what what this is going to most people believe what this will lead to. And this will be a transformative thing. This will be something yeah. everybody has and that I will have when they have it is a pair of Ray-Bans that have that stuff. Built oh, in. yeah. You're, you're, it, you're talking you know, about you're talking about virtual light. Pretty much. But but yeah. It's not that far off. There are actually, I've looked at a couple. I've thought about buying a couple that exist now that are pretty close. They're like and, Google Glass type stuff. Well, no, no. They look no. They look like normal ones. The only difference is there's a set of lenses that are right inside, but they're not oh, outside. Okay. So they, you can't really tell. And, but I'm like, yeah, okay. But it's for watching movies and I have a big TV, so I don't need this thing. But they're cheap. They're like four or 500 bucks. And, you know, so this is where Apple cheap, expects these cheap, to be in. But cheap. In relation to other technologies. To the Vision Pro, let's, which is yeah, $3,500. Yeah, is what I'm, no, that's what I'm saying. Let's be clear. <laughs> $3,000 less, and uh, what is that? Uh, a seventh of the price of something yeah. else <laughs> is cheap in this case. And for what these things are doing, I don't think it's an unreasonable price. I think it's actually fairly cheap for what they're doing. Yeah. I'd love to try one. Don't be wrong. I'd love to see. Oh, I've tried them multiple times. No, no, no. I mean, I mean the Apple the Apple helmet. You can. You can go into an uh, Apple store well, and try it. You can do it. Well, what is this thing called? Is it? It's called Apple Glass or Apple Vision Pro? No, Apple Vision, Vision Pro. Pro. You, can, you can schedule a demo. Oh, wait, so you can go in and look at it. Really interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I'd like. Yeah. I'd love to try one because I'd like to see. Because I mean, they said that the the reviews I read is that a lot of it is cool but kind of gimmicky. You well, know? that's all. That's but, VR in general. See, that's the thing is AR is where they're trying to get to, and that's the Ray Bans where you can see through them. Yeah. And then information when you call it up is overlaid on the world, or you know, it could seal it off depending, but. Yeah, that's where they're they're going to be in, say, 10 years is a pair of Ray-Bans that do this. And those are the ones that I would be interested in. And so the Vision Pro as it currently exists is a necessary Gen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get there where they miniaturize. They figure out the problems because there are inherent problems where people are going to get sick. They're just going to. There's no way around it. You can't you can't technology out of. No. And that's the thing is you and I were just talking about. um, So I just got my new glasses prescription today and like yeah. i've got like w- weird kind of effects but it's very strange sure. when you especially since i haven't had a new prescription in like four years we figured out jumping to this new level of prescription you can get like depth perception issues you can get nausea you can essentially get like sure. motion sickness right 
And these are all the same things you're going to get with virtual reality, with AR, with VR, with all of it, is that there right. will be people who, yeah, you know, it's the same way there are people who can't see 3D. Like they put the 3D glasses on and they see nothing. Right. And that's where once there are a pair of Ray-Bans where you can see through them, you would yeah. still have the utility of all that computing power, but you wouldn't have the, because you wouldn't have that sealed in effect. So th that would mitigate it. You wouldn't be doing VR, you'd be doing AR. And that for most people eliminates it because it's not replacing reality. It is augmenting it. Yeah. And so that type of thing, but, but you could, and that would be the ultimate pairs. You use you do the ultimate set of glasses. Okay. You use them how you want to. Whereas the current ones, yeah, you still have the same old problems. Yeah. They're the heavy, weird thing, you know, the you weird thing them. with, with the Ray bands and even the helmet is if you record, if you can visually record what you see and then play it back for yourself. How mm -hmm. strange must that be? Uh, no, well that you can do that. I mean, that's, you can actually do that. I believe that the way you do it is using an iPhone and then it makes it into that, you know, so it's like being there. Yeah. So it, it must be so but strange there, because but there again, remember, this is, you, you remember, this is oh, what was it? it was it rogue moon. It was anyways, rogue moon where they've, they've got the people in, in a VR unit. And the clone of them has experienced things on the moon. Yes. But then you are in this isolation tank experiencing right. what the clone is. The same is. way. And yes. the whole idea is that because it's because it's you, it is doing all the things you would do. So in the same way, because you filmed it when you were walking through a room, it looks around naturally the way you would look around. So when you when you um when you play it back to yourself, it's a very it must be a very sort of you know, visceral experience to, to, you know, uh, um, to see the past in that kind of level of telescopic detail. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, and, that, and, and I, and that's, that's one of those things where I think it sounds like it sounds amazing, but it's one of those things where how often will you really do it? it well, you know? yeah. Yeah. Now, Listen, you know now what? there are I... examples. If you had a, like a child, yeah. And you wanted to, you know, took video of that child at one years old, two I was, years old. I was going to say to you, I look at photos of my kids when they're babies all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Honestly, if, if I had to come up with the top five uses of my phone, right, the things yeah. I do the most, one of them is look at photos of my kids from when they were yeah. young. I do that to cheer myself up. Um, and once, and so once something cute. like this costs $1,000 or less, yeah. then it makes sense. Yeah. But the fascinating thing is the degree to which everything changes us on a biological level and we, I mean, we are, we don't realize it, but we are evolving ourselves. It's just well, that I worry yeah, that yeah. we are evolving ourselves sometimes to a detriment. Like there was recently a study. I don't know if you saw this at all about um, the, the, I think it's Buddhist monks in Tibet, how Buddhist monks have different, um, what do you call it? Uh, gut bacteria. Then yeah, microbiomes. Yeah, micro, a different gut bacteria, even though they're eating the same thing. that, And what they think is it's essentially they think it's the meditation. So they have found that people, that these monks who spend a lot of time meditating have a different gut bacteria, even though they're eating the same foods as the people outside the monastery who eat the same foods, but essentially have very different gut bacteria. And that the meditation is for some – there is there is a um, – What's the word? A connection. Uh, 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 a cause. A cause. Causation. Yeah, no. Not causation. No. Uh, uh, um, remember the whole correlation? correlation is not yeah. a causation. Yeah, there is a correlation between these these people who spend a lot of time in deep meditative states and the fact that they have a um, they have what 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 essentially is a much calmer, less stress based microbiome in their stomachs or in their gut sure. bacteria right sure and they're sitting there going well holy shit they just got this from meditating like it, and it and it's that kind of thing is that well, i yeah we, i mean that's the, the, that's well, of course there is that and we know yeah. there's going to be that that's the same way that and this is what i go back to with the the hammer metaphor is yeah. all this stuff this vision pro all the vr headsets are not new are there going to be people who will use them detrimentally sure of course oh and listen there always yeah. is any any tool can be used as a weapon in some yeah, way, shape, or exactly. form. Exactly. So that's yeah. why I don't. I, don't wor I know these studies come out. And, oh no! What do we? Yeah. I don't worry about that much because no, it's not. It's not that I, I. 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 I do. I worry because 
I am always worried to find out what the detriment is down the road when they turn around and go, "Whoa!" Well, oh. You know, it's like the, it's it's the whole. Oh man, I read some meme recently that was really funny. That was like, uh, you know, my grandfather was dying from asbestos, my my father was dying from lead, and now I'm dying from plastic. R- right. You know what I mean? You yes. know, it's it's the eras of this shit. You know. Um, well, you it, it is. I I think you would have to be. Let me see how I phrase this. You you would have to be <laughs> actively or blissfully ignorant to not yeah. understand that we are a natural organism that has progressively become more distant from natural things, ways of living, whatever oh, yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. And so there are going to be impacts and they are rarely going to be positive. Yeah. However, I mean, and, yeah. however, on the other side of it, as, as many bad things as there are, there is the, the like these things could allow somebody who is developmentally or physically disabled to experience things they never could. Absolutely. So, and that's, for and those that's people, there, are, yeah. there are pros and cons. There's just this middle. Social media is of, the same thing. Whereas for as much hatred as there is, there are pros or and the there internet, are cons. Yeah. yeah. There are people who have found support groups and other people like themselves yeah. that they would never have encountered in their yeah. natural normal lives. Yeah. And there's people and thing. there's and there's people that are dead. Absolutely. And that sure. and that's yeah. the nature of technology. But that, and, and, so, was, and it, there's I, a there's a certain level of, of Dar- Darwinism to it that I, I there I is acknowledge that. That if if you are one of the unlucky ones that is just destroyed by the technology, then the question is, um, were you not were you just not capable of of surviving it you know like is that evolution possibly you know? i think that i think like not, the danger and i'm not and i'm not saying it in a happy way i'm just saying is that no, is I, that I, kind I of what it is well i think that the 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 issue with the way a lot of these studies and the way a lot of these opinions end up is they make out x technology or whatever thing we're talking about yeah. they they don't make a distinction between whether it's a hammer or a gun and what i mean by that is a hammer is not an inherently destructive object it is an object no, that can yeah, be used can equally be, yeah. for creation or destruction a Absolutely. gun is not period a gun is a destructive object you cannot possibly make an argument well the argument what the argument give, give no, me the, the argument. argument i'm telling you, the argument that they'll make philosophically is sure. that a a gun is a defense is that the having this is the whole mutual uh, no, 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 you're getting that you're moving past the object now i'm not talking okay. about the effect i'm talking about yeah. the intent of the object a gun yes can the, you, only you be do a not, destructive you do not object. make things you do not make things with that's what i'm getting at i'm not yes. saying you cannot use it for beneficial no, no, you're right. purposes okay. you can hunt and feed no, yourself you're right. you can, as yeah, a all physical that. as a physical object as a is, creative as a creation yeah. Itself. It, 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 it is, is not a tool create. of creation. No. Correct. It is a tool of destruction in, in its yeah. purest expression. A yes. hammer is not. A hammer is an object that equally, could, you give it to two people, one will cave in someone's head, the other will build a house. And there is yes. no difference in the expression of that end result from the tool itself. Yeah. A gun is not that. And that's where people treat these things as guns when they are yeah. hammers. And, and, and here's the thing. I do not think that social media is a gun. I'm aware, well, and, but that yes, there are you don't. But I'm saying is positives. a lot of these things position it as, uh oh, yeah. this is the worst thing that's ever happened. No, it isn't. Stop. No, it. I, honestly, I hate to I hate to say this, but I, there's a part of me that just feels like there needs to be some level of oversight. I think you know we. we I don't oh, I'm, like. I'm with you on that. I, I yeah. don't think any rational person. <laughs> This is this this is the same thing now with the AI stuff where people are yeah. I, there are people who are saying it should just be allowed to have whatever it wants because the what it's going to give us is going to be magical and I'm like fuck you stop because what do you think it's is, gonna, yeah what do you think it's going to give you oh uh, like, man there <laughs> don't start me I, I I I would refer you back to the most recent late night where Paris Martino and I talked about this for a little bit because she's on largely the same page I am which is yeah. people are buying into this. The same way that they do everything when they just they I don't well they think it's gonna be it's it's they think it's gonna be magical and it's gonna give them everything they want but then you sit there and I, like, yeah but what do you think it's gonna give you <laughs> what I feel like now I've started to kind of figure out where some of this is coming from yeah and some of it anyway is and this is it's it's sort of sad but you understand it a lot uh, there's a segment of people who are the true believers in every whatever the new technology oh and everything there are always no but that's no no, there, no there's there's there the is, people there who are a, just like 
whatever. But then there's a segment who have been so let down yeah. by every technological wave that hasn't <laughs> been the magical thing that they just want to jump onto the next one and that will be the one. Oh, and I get always, that. It's the hope. It's the hope. Yes. The it's next this, one it's, will be... Yeah. They want the next, one of these the things next, to yeah. be the miracle. And so when it doesn't yeah. happen, they're like, well, well maybe the next one will be. And they just go in blind. Uh, the gamblers. You know, we're like, no, no, the next game is going to be the one where I win big. No, the yes. next game. Exactly. Is yeah. Right. Yeah, then this this technology will be different. This will be the next big thing. Over Here's that a, next hill yeah. is where the yeah. golden path is. And I'm just going to, I got to go over. Oh, no, next hill then. Oh, no, it wasn't that one. Next hill then. Yeah. And that's what it is. And then there, are, of course, the zealots and the maniacs, and all those those people lodge onto anything. I mean, Every, everything has a zealot. Sure, everything. but then I, Beanie, I, babies. I, there is this, Beanie babies had zealots. You know, there what is I mean? this like... portion of what I would call uh, technological utopian type people who really felt like, and it started with the internet. I think a lot of people, this was the internet for them, and when that didn't make everybody into one big cohesive happy world they they're waiting for the thing well, that will and now it's AI. at the end of, at the end of the day boys and girls the problem is people it's not the technology yes. Yes. it's not the tool yeah. it's not it's not it's not even the gun it's the people y- you have sure. to change the people and that's i know that 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 sounds like almost kind of ominous but it's like you have to change people. You have to change people from the ground up. Well, okay, but we should say, because yeah. this, this, there is an important nuance to this. Because you said, well, it's not the gun, it's the people. But there is there is a, a well, second layer to that, which is the level of cautionary boundary should be proportional to what the tool is. Well, I, Meaning, I was going to say, you, you, what, you, when I say that you need to change people from the, the ground up, I, I sit there and I say, I think you need, I, I think you need more education. I think you need more uh, a more varied type of education. I think that you need to really try to listen. There's always going to be people that are bastards, right? But I, sure. I, I find that we could try and give people more of a a better sense of point of view of the world, of their place in it. If the, you know the, you know we we are immensely self centered. And that, and that, oh, are we? Yeah. And that makes it so much worse because nobody takes this kind of big picture point of view. Um, and it's and, and then you get into these, you know, these these weird little thickets of uh, uh, of madness, you know, where it's like, uh, you know, right now. I, I know I know that there's cases like this right now. You have a problem where if an underage girl sends sexual pictures to her her underage boyfriend, right? So two 16 year olds, right? They are both in trouble, right? Basically because she has created child pornography and he has received child pornography. Now let's change the fact that it's a girlfriend sending pictures to her boyfriend. Let's get over the fact that he probably. By and large, he may have pressured her to do it. Um, he may share it with his friends, right? That is all a product of modern day technology. And the jump to rule that suddenly the both of them are now sex offenders doesn't feel nuanced enough for what the situation is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. I think that's I, um, I think most people like- fundamentally understand that. Yeah, and, and and I think is that we we are creating new territory to which I think that the laws we have are not prepared for. Okay, well that's now that's a different discussion. You're absolutely oh right. I know, the, but the but idea, laws come yeah, laws course. come from people, you sure. know, and there's and it's so funny because there's this this desire to not have culture change, and yet at the same time you have people running headlong into the future. You know, so it's it's yeah. so it, we we the, it's such a uh, a dichotomy of extremes at different ends, you know. But yes. I I think that a lot of this ends up being people because I mean you know who make who makes a tool or who makes a thing that's that's just for destruction people, right? We made the thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And you have to question the. Uh, the mentality of a species that made something specifically just for destruction. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there yeah. has to be a level of, uh, of madness there. So, well, you know, 
or just a basic uh, violence. No, aggressiveness, I, no, 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 self-centeredness. No, no. Well, that that all comes from the the self-absorption <laughs> element and the the inability to empathize. That's where it comes. Oh from. yeah, violence yeah. is a byproduct of a lack of empathy. Yeah, if you understand pain, I mean, obviously there are people with mental issues, so we'll put those aside. Yeah, but yeah. most normal people who are not suffering from something, yeah, understand via the idea of empathy why things are bad. You you don't. You don't steal from someone if you understand how what it will being them. stolen from is like. Yeah. Unless again, you yeah. are a sociopath yeah. or a psychopath or something like that. You're putting those putting those those people. Aside. Yeah, and and what's fascinating is that, like if you take it back historically, there was always a place in society for psychopaths and sociopaths. Sure. You know what I mean? Like like if you if you take things back almost like you, you go tribal. You know, you always wanted to have a few psychopaths around for for wars and battles and things like that. Mm -hmm. But you just didn't want them in, in you know in in the the halls of government. You didn't want them mixing around with yeah. the, uh, the rest of society. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, so it's yeah. like you know whereas now we have psychopaths and sociopaths running corporations that basically sure. dictate the 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 whims of the world. That's right. You know, and like that is not safe. I wouldn't think so, but yeah. You know, um, yeah. So it's, uh, for, uh, it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm always fascinated and I am always worried about what the next big technology is going to do to us as biological organisms. No, it's, it's a reasonable thing to be worried about, you know, especially in the, in the paradigm of kids and children and, and how that affects them. Because like the other day, like I was in a waiting room with my daughter and there were these three kids sitting next to us in the waiting room and they all had a phone. And I mean, it was like two inches from their face. And yeah. these kids were like maybe six, seven years old. Oh, sure. And I was like, why the fuck do six year olds well, have okay. cell phones? That's, that's a parenting problem, right? It's a human problem. Yeah. Well, same, same I mean, difference. I mean, yeah, they're, no, no, they're but what I mean is you start, parents have existed you start, forever. you start separating the, the technology, technology as the problem versus the human problem. The phones aren't the problem. It's how they're used. that's the problem. That's a human problem, you know? Sure. But, but that's a problem but that would the, be solved by the parents not giving them but cell phones. When they make the technology so addictive that it's almost impossible to put it down, suddenly that kind of starts to become a technology problem. You know, well, that's definitely a component of it. Yeah. But I would make the argument that, like so many things in life, the idea of I can't put it down. There are people who absolutely have addictive personalities. Oh yeah, and you know those what? Types of problems. But Going back to West Wing, because I, I thought it's fascinating. There was an episode where we were talking about being an alcoholic. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not that I want one drink. It's that I want a hundred drinks. It's, it's, it's that I want twenty drinks. And and I, and the and they did, ask did he him do the why. speech about? Yeah, and he's like, I don't understand how you can have one drink. I don't understand how you don't want more of this. Like this. Yeah, this yeah. Whole thing. And, but he says he's like, yeah. And she says, well, why is that? And he's like, well, because I'm an alcoholic. He's like, I don't want one. I want twenty. You know, and that is that is the you know knowing that you have a specific type of addiction. And then you know, she and, says something along the lines of, why is life so bad? And he's like, no. Life's no, fine. I just, yeah, I well, just then like why? It. Because I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. Because I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. So it's there are people who are unfortunately but there, but there again, geared towards addictive technologies, addictive programs, addictive anything. Those they, things, they would have found something. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. But those things can all be mitigated. You can hopefully. stop all that stuff. Well, no, not hopefully. You can. Yeah. I yeah, mean, they don't. They don't stop okay, because well, they make money because, off these things. I mean, well, that's, sure. honestly, that's the other part of this is that. No, no, no. What I'm saying is from the parent side, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. From the parent side. But if, I'm saying if is you that, don't want your kid to use Facebook because you think it's addictive and you can make that argument, don't, yeah, then, don't then you don't them, put yeah. that app on the phone and you lock it yeah. with a parental control. Yeah. And hope that Fun. they're not clever that they're not clever enough to outsmart you. Th look, at this point, <laughs> there are there are monitoring tools. That will tell you what's going on on a. Oh, I'm sure, but the problem is, it's how clever you are versus how clever your kids well, are. Well, and that's where a lot of people will say that the actual right way to handle this is to inform them of, okay, understand this is a predatory thing. Oh yeah, yeah. And let them see what it does. Show them yeah. what it does. Don't hide it. Yeah. And say that you know this is the reality of it, and 
You do as much yeah. as you can. What makes do this, I, what I, makes... I do agree that there are predatory companies and apps and everything else that should be regulated. I have no problem with regulation whatsoever. That has become a, a oh, no, you're a commie word in the United States where if you say regulation, uh, I must want to bring down the entire government or something because. Oh, yeah. No, I'm you know, I'm uh, I'm massively for medical uh, uh, pharmaceutical company regulation. Well, I hope you like Uncle Sam getting between you and your body then. Yeah, but they want Uncle Sam to get involved with every fucking thing. Oh, else. no, no, no. Let's so not, no, no, we're not talking promote. about that. Let's not talk yeah, about that. Not. Stick to the subject at hand, you The other comedy. big problem with technology is the fact that you've got it run through the filter of making money. Well, sure. That okay. is the other yes. part of the, of well, the puzzle that makes it, it so much worse. And that's because along with the, the idea is how to, oh, our technology is really addictive and people can't put it down. Excellent. How much money are we making? You cannot decouple yeah. the lack no, of No, no, you can't. No, no, the lack of empathy <laughs> yeah. on one side is yeah. equally matched by the fact that in most what are considered developed countries, yeah. your worth as a person is your worth as a bank account. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And until you fix that, the rest yeah. of it really doesn't matter. Yeah, and there is that so, question of what is the point of capitalism? Is, isn't the point of <laughs> capitalism to escape capitalism? Well, yeah. And there's two ways to escape capitalism. You either become so rich that it becomes moot, yeah. right? Or- you walk away from the system as it is and find a new sense sure. of value, right. which, you know, that that's the that's the hard part, <laughs> which most I mean, fundamental systems do not encourage. And in fact, try to discourage or obfuscate. Well, no, because you, you need to have you need to have consumers. You need to have workers and consumers. You need to have a workforce that feeds consumers. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The problem is when when that system gets out of whack with itself and suddenly mm-hmm the consumers can't afford to consume the thing that the system is is putting out there you know and this takes us back to the the apple you know vision pro headset is that sure. you sit there and you're like why the hell did it even sell this because it, it's not like they wanted to sell this to the mass public it's a very specific overpriced piece of technology at the moment yes you know so they obviously they were obviously after something you don't put this thing out unless there's something that you're after. No, they, they have an end the goal. Money. Yeah. They have an end goal. So, by the way, you could do your shill statement now. I was going to say, and speaking of money, patreon.com slash shows are nightmare. <laughs> Go to the show homepage and select from the squares to your right for different ways to support not only the show, but uh, Lando and I individually, whether it's through Lando's Amazon author page or from the little link tree of mine that has all my art links. Because it's capitalism, everybody trying to is it is it is it we don't make any we don't make any money off this shit no 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 although i will say i will say i am i am uh, continually surprised oh i didn't look i meant to look at what the numbers are for the what's that one of the youtube videos is doing exceptionally well which is not because i i am not marketing i barely know how to do anything everyone i don't market anything but one of the videos has a lot of view i think it's a tarkovsky one which is really surprising to me because well that's a specific it's so uh, yeah i guess that's it's the i don't thing. think listen oh I, I know i know that you stand by it, but i don't really think you need the podcast anymore i think your fives and your specials bring in far more attention than any of that stuff oh but but i think i think our, i think our podcast just bummed people out at this point <laughs> no i don't think so i i you know what i think the 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 sound clip gimmick a lot of people like the sound clips for the movies now which is good it's a little more work for me because i have to note things and make sure i capture them properly uh yeah the tarkovsky one is up to 655 views which is well it's it's uh, a very specific by far thing, the most know? i think we've ever gotten on a youtube video so but yes that's well, that's how you can support the show uh, did I cover everything on the show segment thing? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and then we did with the podcast. That, thing that's a the... record, right? It's a record that we got. Was it? What are you like forty-seven minutes in or something like that? But, oh, for the show <laughs> segment. Uh, pro- <laughs> well, don't forget we used to do it at the end, so it just depends on how did you look we? at it. But yeah, something. Like, I oh yeah, remember yeah. that. No, it, well, I used to just rely on the end crawl. I think says does it? Oh, God, I got. Oh I gotta yeah, that too. it might. Well, I got to redo that anyway because it mentions Twitter, and I, I got to redo that anyway. I just, I don't know if anybody even listens yeah. to that. You know what I mean? It's like it's the end credits, so who cares? But uh, anyway. I don't, I don't even know what our music is anymore in the end. It's, it's the same. It's the same music it's been it? for right. a while now. It's uh, Ogre did it. So it's that same. Okay. I'm not, I'm not ever going to change his stuff. Well, I was going to say, it's still good. It's excellent. 
So yeah. I really have no desire to yeah. change. Uh, we have we we have custom theme music for everything now. So I don't I Yay. don't need to change anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not like in the old shows where you know we were basically you know copyright infringing things. But uh, that's that's over with now. Well, didn't we? No, didn't we get a lot of the stuff from uh, the, the no the free no sites? no no. Well, okay. uh, I mean, no 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 no. Uh, at one point, I started paying attention, but there's a while there where I'm playing. You know, no, no, it's not, it's not. Well, that was uh, the early Wild West days. Of yeah, honestly, the, the shows where that's the case, uh, if they said you can't play them anymore, no one would care. So it's fine. I mean, that was, not, you're not going to lose much there. Anyway, I wanted to do a movie review because I needed a break from Mad Bull 34. I will finish that, but I didn't want to dive back into rape and sexual assault right away. So I decided to go into more comfortable waters, and I went back to, to one of my kind of comfort food genres, which is early 80s slashers, especially ones that have a low budget. <laughs> and this one is – this is I, such a – I, a, love, I yeah. love that the safe space from Mad Dog is slasher films. Yeah, yeah. Well, slasher films where there isn't a high degree of rape or anything like that, because otherwise, yeah, I might as well just watch it's Mad just, Dog. So. It's just murder, guys. It's just yeah, murder. It's, it's, just, it's just silly murder. And, uh, you know, shoddy effects sometimes. And, and and a lot lately, movies like this, where, again, I've got some a, a weird soundtrack, which I actually took a clip of this time because it's so bizarre, and a movie that does odd things and, and has an idea that could have been interesting. This feels a lot like the Dorm that Drip Blood in a lot of ways where... Oh, actually, <laughs> yes. No, this is... I did not expect to like the characters in this movie as much as I did. The characters are well written and actually act intelligently, which is weird for this type of movie. The movie is called Mountaintop Motel Massacre, which when you hear that title, you don't necessarily envision a film that takes characterization. Especially, very, especially uh, not with that poster. Holy shit. Uh, which one are you looking at? The one with the dollar or one with the woman? There's the doll and then there's the woman. Both of the woman exactly. one is fantastic. I love that one. Please do not disturb Evelyn. She already is. That is a great tagline. <laughs> that woman, by the way, is not the, the actress in the film. Oh, I didn't see the tagline. That's fantastic. Yes, that is not the the actress who plays the woman in the hotel or uh, in okay. the movie. Uh, so this is a 1983 slasher film about a woman who runs a very... Th this was filmed at an abandoned set of fishing cabins. And boy, is that clear. Because looking at them, no human being would ever want to stay in a place like this. There would be just so many problems with it. But the movie actually addresses it, which I give it credit for. So we in the opening, beginning of the movie, the first thing that we see is... This just a, a thing of credit, a uh, thing of text with a picture of the, the woman, uh, Evelyn, who it just says was in a mental institution for, let's see, what was the years? Uh, she was in there for three years from 78 to 81. It doesn't say why. There's literally just a picture of her in a straight jacket, which looks like it's actually just a bed sheet that they kind of tucked her into. It doesn't look like a straight jacket at all. And it just says, uh, admitted July 13th, 1978, released July 20, or January 24th, 1981. No explanation as to why. She just went in and came out. And so then we see that she is working at this, this motel called the Mountaintop Motel. And she's gardening, and she just seems like a normal uh, older woman who's just gardening. And then she sees a little white rat... And gets very bothered by it and starts yelling to her daughter, saying, you better come get this rat before I kill it. Which doesn't seem like the act of a rational person. And then when the, the daughter does not come to get the rat, she kills it with a sickle. And that becomes her murder weapon. So she kills this rat because the daughter didn't come to get it. Now, as that's happening, we're cutting into the house. And we're seeing the daughter in her bedroom, which looks like a satanic shrine. And the daughter is tying up a rabbit and uh, is then setting up a some kind of satanic tea party, which you think is in the bedroom. But then you realize that it's what you think then is a basement. But in fact, we find out later is a series of tunnels that are inexplicably underneath all the cabins and just so happen to have trapdoors that open in the bathrooms. 
just thinking about why these tunnels exist and the way that they open up could be its own movie. We never get into it. We never get an explanation. Yeah, but it is. It is fascinating sometimes with movies in general. Yes, where you it's fascinating. You, you get you get these sub or you get structures. Let's just call them that. You get these structures and you sit there and go, "Who the fuck built this?" Yeah, because at first like, I thought, "Oh, maybe this was the maybe this was a rudimentary plumbing system." But I'm like, "No, that doesn't make any sense." Yeah, because like, the plumbing is built there. this, and that's why I, yeah. I do like it when a movie says something like, "Oh, these are built on old natural tunnels through the right. this," or "These are old." Yes. Uh, oh, is that? Um, uh, from the from the time of uh, what do you call it? No alcohol. The time of no alcohol. Prohibition called. Prohibition. Jesus. These are old prohibition tunnels with this smuggle booze. You know, like I like it when they at least give you something to work with. Because otherwise, you're like, you've got a super duper, you know, uh, tunnel system with no explanation. You're like, how the hell did that get there? And like you said, it almost becomes its own story. It does. And so there may have been a reason that was never put into the film. So either it was cut or it was never thought out. Whatever. It's a great gimmick for a serial killer movie. It's for a slasher film. This is great because the movie does utilize it fairly well where people don't know what's going on because she's using these little trap doors that and they're in the bathroom under a rug. So you don't see them. They're not just where you could look at a seam. They're underneath these rugs that are in the bathroom, like a bath mat that's there. And so when you're staying someplace, unless you think to move it or something, you might not even ever look at it. So it, it functions for the movie, but it makes no sense. And so. She the the after killing the rat, the mother's looking around for the daughter and she goes down into the tunnel and she hears the daughter who is trying to summon her dead father. And that's what this clip is where. So you, so, so the the woman, so the woman who went to the mental hospital is her yes, mother, is her mother and, and the daughter the, and the daughter the, is older or younger. Uh, I mean, she's younger, but I would say she to look at her. So they gave. So, I don't know. So the She's, mother wasn't so disturbed that they didn't give the daughter back. Yeah, the her. daughter, I would say, is probably fourteen to fifteen. Something yeah, that's, like that's, that's, so no. that's what I'm saying. So she wasn't so disturbed that she got she couldn't get her daughter back. Right. Okay. Yes. So we don't really know, but but we get this clip that again doesn't really explain why the mother went to a mental institution, but indicates that the daughter who is by the way has a satanic shrine both in her bedroom and in the sub basement with a goat and animals is complaining about her mother being a little bit unhinged daddy i've got to talk to you it's mama she's getting sick again thinks she needs to go back to the hospital She told me if I ever mentioned it again, she was going to get me. Talk to me, Daddy. As you heard, that's Evelyn that's, saying, Laurie, where that's are not, you? That's not creepy at all, by the way. No. But you know what? Listen, it is fascinating that she feels the need to try and contact her father in the land of the dead to complain yeah. about her mom. And and why? What, <laughs> again, there's a goat. There's all this stuff like, that's satanic plus, imagery. Listen, listen, it is utter comedy, though, the idea that someone is sitting there having a satanic seance to a talk to the dead. A satanic tea party. She's going tea cups. Going, dead daddy. Mommy's being Mom's crazy sick. again. Right. And you're sitting yes. there going, really? Really? Uh -huh. Who's being crazy right now for sure? Right. <laughs> but again, it would seem that her father must be in hell for what she's doing here. So there's all kinds of questions that this whole thing brings up. In any event, the mother yeah. catches her and says, I told you never to do this again, indicating that this has happened before. And she gets very angry and starts to yeah. kill all the animals and break everything and accidentally slits her daughter's throat with the sickle. Oh, accidentally. Well, she is, she, it, is it is it really accidental? Like, in fairness, she does yeah. appear to be in a mindless rage, which maybe that was her problem. We don't know. People, maybe she could not control her temper and she became violent. Who knows? We we have to fill in what the story doesn't give us. Got so it. she doesn't seem to be doing it intentionally because you see her kind of whipping around and she's not looking at her, and then you just see the sickle catches her throat and then she gets very despondent. So my read of it is she did not at least consciously intend to kill her now she didn't mean to do it yeah right it does appear to be an accident as a byproduct of her inability to control her anger so 
she then but then after that point things start to become far more uh deliberate so she then brings the body upstairs covers up everything washes all the blood off calls the sheriff and the house and the and a ambulance and they show up and she basically says that there was an accident in the yard she never really defines the details and so the sheriff is immediately suspicious like well, he's mean, trying to, I, yeah, I would be. I mean, as he should be, which is good. I mean, he didn't just buy her story and and not worry about it, but he couldn't find any evidence of anything. And the only person, other person there, happens to be a preacher who was a friend of the father, who was staying in the motel, and he basically says, "I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. I just heard yelling, and I came to help." And he administers the last rites, and like that's it. But the sheriff's like, okay, well, nobody leave town because I may have more questions. But he has no evidence of anything. So it's a suspicious death. But there is no indication, even though you would think that her past history would immediately have more investigation than this. But well, do they know, do they know that the sister was a, a – or sorry, that the daughter was a Satan worshiper? Or, well, actually, he does, me, he does look in the room and he kind of looks she, around. She was. was she a Satan worshiper or was she just into, like, goth shit? Well, I, I don't – there's – it's hard to say. Because her like, room is a never, horror show. In, in that in that line that you the, uh, the the clip that you gave us, she never invokes the devil. She she's doesn't. Really just try, she's just there trying is, to call her dad. There is a, a line where she says, "I summon thee," but she never mentions the devil. So you're right. Yeah. There's no way to know. But her room looks like a satanic panic room, which, with the timing of this film, is what I think it's meant to be. <laughs> the only thing, because there was a black goat in the tea party, you yeah. know what I mean. So there's certain imagery that you just assume is supposed to be the you know but, it's so funny too because you say satanic panic and and i know that you're you're talking about that time period where everyone's like oh no the kids are all worshiping satan yes but like i hear satanic panic and for a second there i just think of like a panic room for satan sure well maybe that maybe that's what these tunnels were who knows but the, i did keep an eye out and i never saw a pentagram or any actual devil imagery but the room is full of like there's a drawing of a bunny with blood in its mouth and red eyes. Like there's stuff that's supposed to be like, OK, this. But as you said, this could just be a goth lifestyle. Who knows? But there is no overt mention of the devil. There is a little bit. There's going to be an interesting discussion later, which does bring up the idea of heaven and hell. But it's interesting the the angle the movie takes up. But we'll get to that. But for now, the sheriff's like, OK, well, I'm going to keep an eye on things. Don't leave town. I may have questions, but basically leaves. So then we get a funeral scene where that preacher is basically doing the, the funeral rites and everything else. So it's a good thing he happened to be in town. And this is the first time, and then we don't get anything more of this for quite a while, where Evelyn is hearing voices. Now, importantly, in this scene, the voices she's hearing are from the people around. So this is the movie's first indication that the daughter was probably right. And that she, I mean, she, her killing the rat was already a sign that maybe something was a little off, but this is now pushing it even further. So this is the, basically the burial of the daughter. And so we find it impossible to accept the death of one so young. The Lord's reason for taking her from us is beyond our comprehension, but within our faith, our faith, not to question, but to accept as is, evident in the song of Zechariah, that we might trust him without fear throughout the days of our lives. And you, my child, shall be known as the prophet of high. We'll have a moment of silent prayer. So as you were hearing, there were, she's looking around at people and she's hearing these she, things saying she, she thinks, killed her. She thinks she can hear their thoughts. She thinks she's hearing them. Now, yeah. Based on what comes far later in the movie, she may have actually heard their thoughts. There's no reason to know one way or another. But at this point, we think it's a delusion. As far as we can tell, yeah. there is no supernatural anything. She is just starting to break down again, as she may is have there, before. Is there ever a supernatural element to the movie? Yes, but it doesn't really jive with this, so it's hard to say. Okay. But yeah, there is. There is a, out of nowhere at the very end, supernatural element to it. That then takes it across the threshold from mental illness to, oh, no, wait a minute. There's something happening here. 
But for the next about 10 to 15 minutes, the movie's basic premise is that people are showing up at the motel. So Evelyn, this hotel, by the way, which looks like something far more terrifying than even the psycho hotel could ever be. Do they do they ever have an explanation where it's like, well, this is the last hotel, you know, in the area? So, or sort of. Like you, I think there is actually a thing where somebody says they basically say, well, if I had more money, I could stay somewhere better. So, yes, okay. they basically do acknowledge that everybody, uh, the preacher, the old carpenter and the newlywed couple all basically make comments about the fact that they don't have money to stay anywhere better. That, and there's this general idea, which we'll hear in the next clip I'm going to play, about the fact that there's it seems to be in an economic downturn for this area or for everybody. It's hard to say. But basically, we get our roster of uh, motel inhabitants, which are the preacher who we've already heard. That's the friend of Evelyn's husband uh, who did the funeral thing. Uh, an old carpenter shows up who I I adored this guy. He was great because he was the most practical. Uh, there's a clip I have with more my note on it was the carpenter was absolutely right. The carpenter guy is awesome. Uh, and, and I hated it when he died. I really hoped he would make it out and he doesn't. But there's the carpenter who shows up. Then we have a newlywed couple who it's their wedding day, but I guess because they have so little money, they're not in any type of wedding attire. They don't have cans in the car, nothing. They just say that it's their wedding day. Then we have a set of cousins who I, I, I don't really know where they were going, but their dialogue is the fact that they, they're both singers and they're the only ones in their family who want to make something of themselves and they think they can be country singers. And then there is the yuppie guy. And I call him yuppie guy because he has a car phone. And so that makes him yuppie guy in this like, particular like, universe. Like a big brick? Uh, well, no, it, it's, it's big, but it's not a brick. It's it's one of the ones that would be built into the phone, the actual car, so it's not the brick. Oh, okay, it's not independent. It. It's stuck to the yeah. car. Right? So these people are all arriving, and the two cousins and the, the uh, yuppie get stuck there because a very bad storm comes in. So they never intended to stay in this place, but they had nowhere else to go. Like and because snow the storm, or rain? No, it's rain and like a tree falls down and blocks the road, that type of thing. It's a very bad thunderstorm, you know, uh, a very, you know, no, not snow. It's, it's definitely just rain, but torrential rain, can't see high winds, you know, power lines are coming down, all that kind of stuff. Very bad storm. So the carpenter uh, and the preacher both get there when it's still nice out. So it's the, you know, so the preacher comes out and says, you know, hi, how you doing? And meets the carpenter. They're friendly enough. And the preacher helps him bring in his tools. And they have this discussion. And this is, again, this movie surprised me because I actually think the characters are well done. They're well defined. They act rationally. They're not stupid. They don't make dumb decisions. Is, is this a director who went on to do great things or is this somebody who just, uh, no, as movie? far as I understand, he did lots of B movies. The guy, the director's name is Jim McCullough senior. It was written by, I believe his son, cause his name is Jim McCullough jr. So I have to assume that it was the son. So the director that let's see that the writer, did the son do much? So nothing, so nothing special. They, n- no. None of them became like great, you know, movie makers. No, later and on. none of these uh, movies are, are anything that I know. Let me look at that's the writer. Let me look at the director and see if he did anything that that's of note. But I didn't think so. Did he do anything that was? Is there anything on here I even know? No, none of this stuff is. None of the he only did six features, and this was one of them. But no, nothing. So. The writing is, I mean, the direction is fine, but it's nothing special. It's really the writing because the characters just feel remarkably well-defined for this type of film. So this is the exchange. The preacher and the carpenter are kind of sitting around and just talking. And this is their discussion of what they do, like their jobs. How long have you been a preacher anyway? I've been spreading the good news for now 25 years. It beats the heck out of selling life insurance or Bible. That's how I come started preaching, you know, selling Bibles. Two Sundays ago, way back to April of 1955, I've saved over 500 people. But your preaching don't say nothing about drinking, does it? Sure it does. I don't drink forever. It's a long, slow process. Rome wasn't built in a day. I drunk up in a night. The kingdom of heaven isn't someplace up there in the clouds. It's here now in your heart. If the kingdom of heaven is in my heart, where is the kingdom of hell? Well, I, I guess it's there also. 
I see we hear uh, tools over there that you're in a construction business of some kind. Yep, gentleman carpenter. Up here for work? No, just looking. Business is kind of down out there, isn't it? Man, let me tell you something. I haven't been out of work since I was 16 years old. And I ain't never seen nothing like this. Well, to tell you the truth about it, I ain't been exactly setting the woods on fire and saving souls myself. Well, Melvin, I think I'll turn in. Good night. Night, Bill. I just like that exchange. It just flows line, very well. That line about hell and heaven being in the heart. I mean, uh-huh. that's, uh, that's some... That's some pretty good writing for that's, what is a slasher flick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. To watch this movie, I, I, I it, you don't expect this, and and like I said, the characters' actions are also far more intelligent than what is typical. This is '83, so this is early on when there was you know the dumb you know people doing stupid things and don't but go hey, in that room. The pow- the power's gone out and there's a serial killer on the loose. Let's have sex. R- right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there's another thing that's unusual about there is no nudity in this entire film. There's a couple of points where it's sort of th- you think there will be, but there isn't, and there's barely any even swearing. There's gore. It's not really good, but it's there. But it's a bizarrely chased film in a lot of ways. That's what I mean about it. it's unusual. It just struck me as weird so and because some of this writing is quite good and you will hear there's the clips i pulled people are making smart decisions about okay do this make sure you don't answer unless you and here's something somebody knocks on the door and says oh it's me every time that i can remember when i was paying attention they would open they would look before they would unlock the door they would open a little curtain and look before they would just unlock the door little things like that where it's like well that's they're acting like people who are afraid would act. They're being cautious. Stuff like that throughout the movie. So it's, in those ways, it's better than you would expect this movie to be. In other, words, in other ways, like Evelyn is a terrible character. The, the actress is not very good. The murders are, anybody could deflect this older woman. I'm sorry. She's not like Angela Bassett shape or anything like that where <laughs> you would realistically expect her to get the drop on anybody. So that's ridiculous. And and so there is, there's bad too. Don't get me wrong. This is not a, Oh, wow, this is uh, everybody's sleeping on this one. But there's these moments like that dialogue and like the actions of the characters where I'm like, no, this is somebody was paying attention to some things or. But then we have stuff like this. Now, if, if you noticed in that clip, there was one part where the audio kind of dropped low. Yeah. And that was where Evelyn is sneaking around underneath the cabins and listening in on the conversations because these tunnels are, you know, the floors aren't you know thick or anything. So she's kind of listening into what they're talking about and. There's this there's a period of the film where she just seems to be a prankster where she almost just seems like a bored child and she's not really trying to kill anybody. She's just doing all these dumb little things. Uh, But one of the things that is kind of borderline is for some reason, the daughter in her Satan room had snakes and uh, like all kinds of animals, which I don't know if they were, you know, snake again could be a goth thing, could be a, a Satan thing. Who knows? So she takes a snake that's poisonous from what we find out. And puts it in a bag and leaves it in the young couple's room. And when they're in there, the, the wife picks up the bag and says, what's this? And, and the, the, the husband says, oh, I don't know. They must have just left it in the room. Just leave it. Somehow she doesn't notice anything's in it. Doesn't look. Just kind of throws it aside. And so, of course, what happens is the snake comes out and eventually bites the husband in the face. And it's poisonous, so, you know, he's in pain and all this stuff. And so you would think, okay, that's going to kill him. But here again, the movie unlike what I would expect treats that wound very, what feels like rationally and realistically where he never dies. He gets this point where his face gets very swollen and he's in a lot of pain and he's like, get me an ambulance. But then he starts to get past the worst of it. As the movie goes on, it's bizarre because the setup would be that that kills him. I've seen that a million times in movies like this, where there's the snake bites you, you die. Then I assumed it would bite the wife and she would die. But no, the, the snake, they beat it to death. And he's just waiting for an ambulance, which never shows up. But anyway, that's going on. And so we have the yuppie guy is driving and the two women break down their car. Uh, the tire goes flat and he happens to be driving by and says, hey, you know, uh, I can give you a lift to the motel I'm going to because it's really bad and the, the road's closed. And, you know, lucky for him, they're wearing white T-shirts with no bras and it's pouring rain. And that's the most nudity you're getting in this film. But <laughs> there it is for that. That's all you're getting. So if anybody's coming into this, that's as much as you're going to get. So he picks him up 
And uh, we get this this discussion where they notice that he has a car phone, which must mean that he's got some money. Yeah, well, if you stayed on the damn road. I tried to. I told you for the hundredth time. You give your girls a lift to the motel up the road? A motel? Forget it. Don't have to bite his head off. No, no, it's okay. I'd be mad, too, if I'd been caught out in this rain, got wet like that. My name's Al. I'm Tanya. This is my cousin, Chrissy. Cousins? Kind of look like cousins. <sighs> sure is some car. Yeah, and look, a telephone. You must be rich or something. No, no, nothing like that. Well, are you a lawyer? No, but I keep a dozen of them working full time. You girls ever hear Columbia Records? Well, that's mine. That's my baby. My God! You must know Barbara Mandrell. Sure do. Barbara's made me a fortune. Well, what are you doing down here? <clears throat> um, on a talent search. As a matter of fact, I was heading down to Shreveport to audition a group. If they're good enough, I'll give them a break. You know what? What? Me and Prissy sang, too. No kidding. No, oh, Tanya, shut up. What well, we do? We sang at the Springfield Country Jamboree last Saturday. Really? Tanya, the Jamboree is a long way from being able to make records. Well, I know. But it wouldn't do any harm. Maybe I will listen to us at the motel. Oh, shut up. You're embarrassing me. He don't want to listen to us. Well, it never hurts to ask, does it, Al? No. Can't be banished from this business. See there? Well, how about it? Can you listen to us? We'll see. And this is setting <laughs> Al up. Seems, what you, Al seems very suspect. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, what it, what it's setting up is what ends up being the case, which is that he's going to audition him all right, but he's going to do it in the movie producer style, which is, well, if you really want a record, you know what you're going to have to do to get that audition, right? But we're not there yet. So they show up, and, and there even that becomes something different where again this movie takes little twists and turns which is the reason that i'm like okay this is it's worth talking about anyway so they get there right after the guys got bit in the face and the wife has discovered that the phones are out and this is right after the power's gone out so there's nothing really suspicious yet and we don't ever know that evelyn cut the phone lines as far as i'm aware it was just a byproduct of the storm there is nothing to contradict that the power going out and the phones being out is because it's a bad storm. We're shown it's a bad storm. We see multiple examples. So this just happens to work in her murderous favor. So the yuppie pulls up as the wife is kind of hysterical outside. He says, what's wrong? And she says, my husband was uh, bitten by a snake and the phone's right. And he says, okay. He says, I'll call the paramedics. Uh, so he tells the girls, go into the room. We'll get the room and I'll call the paramedics. And he does. So he's not a complete scumbag. He goes and he calls and he says, he gets a hold of somebody and says, can you get somebody out here? Uh, and they're like, yeah, the, the, the roads are really bad, but we'll get there somebody as, as soon as possible. Uh, you know, can you give us a number where you can call him back, call you back? He says, yeah, oh, yeah, here's my number. But the phone's in the car, so I'm not really sure how they were going to get a hold of him, but that's the idea. So uh, now we see Evelyn, uh, as everybody's in the rooms, power's out, phones are out, but everybody is kind of, you know, in the rooms, just hanging out, waiting for the storm to pass. And this is where Evelyn now starts going around doing uh, Evelyn's magical pranks, which is... She again, she's just pranking people. So uh, she takes uh, the preachers, the first one. She just unloads what looked like five rats into the room and the rat bites him on the finger and he gets pissed and then he throws the rats out of the room. And that's all that happens because the rats, <laughs> not Wolverines. So it, it's and she's like giggling. So, again, she seems like a teenager. Right. And this is halfway or so into the film. So we're 45 minutes in and nobody past the daughter dying has uh, nobody else has expired at this point she hasn't killed anybody she's just mildly annoying them but now we start to get things where we hear her daughter's voice right but we still she just basically saying mama or you know i'm here or something but we don't hear anything else so then we get to a point where uh she you see her reading a bible and she goes into the daughter's room because she hears the voice and she's grabbing the dolls off the shelf and she's like listening to them and and then for whatever reason, that leads her to go and grab a bunch of roaches, which she has in a aquarium in the daughter's room, I guess for the snake, maybe. And she goes and she releases them in the room of the carpenter, where, again, all they do is piss him off. They don't hurt him. 
He just wakes up, sees them on his bed, and gets annoyed and literally says something like, I should just stay somewhere else. This place is a bug hotel. The notable part about this scene, though, is, again, like a bunch of movies I've been reviewing recently, the soundtrack is fucking weird. So here's the music while the roaches are crawling around on the guy, and I have no explanation for it. So just listen to this and quote-unquote enjoy. You're not uh, listening to an Apex Twin off cut. That's the music. I, I, I'm of, very confused. I don't. I have no explanation. I have no explanation. And there's weird music throughout, but that one was notable because it was without a lot of other sound effects, so you could hear the yeah. pureness of it. I have no idea, man. Uh, I mean, there's another one that plays when she's getting the snake. That's so annoying, I wouldn't even capture it. But it's like a rattlesnake's rattle, but made into some kind. I mean, again, it sounds like experimental music of some kind that, you know, somebody just did not have the talent to understand was more annoying than fitting. So that's a byproduct thing that I'm like, okay, that's neat. I don't know what it is, but it's neat. So then we get back into, so right after she releases the, uh, the what do you call it, uh, the roaches. Then we hear the daughter say, you have to kill them, mommy. So at this point, the pranks are, I guess, are not enough for ghosts. So they, they, you know, this is kind of like in Beetlejuice where they, they do the little pranks and then Juno says, all right, you have to do some serious shit if you're going to scare him now. Enough with the dumb stuff like ripping your face off. This is a, basically following the same playbook. Like the daughter's like, okay, mom, uh, you're not getting it. You have to start murdering them. And so now she's going to start actually killing people. But right, right after that, we get a scene where the record guy, uh, Columbia man, or, uh, yeah, Columbia guy with the cousins is like, all right, well, uh, you know, you guys sing nice and all, but, um, you know, I think we're going to have to do a little bit more if we're going to get you a record deal. And so the two of them say, well, let's go into the bathroom and, and uh, get prepped. And they have this discussion where one of them is clearly fine with sleeping her way into a record contract and the other is a little bit more skeptical. What do you think about this guy? Are you kidding? Columbia Records? Well, what if he's just saying that to see what he can get? <sighs> yeah. And what if he's telling the truth? Well, I don't think he is. Well, all you've lost is a romp in the hay. Big deal. Well, I don't know. I like the fact that one of them is skeptical. That they don't just immediately <laughs> both go, whatever, you know, it's worth it, who cares, you know. So at least there's some doubt that's going on with that. So the one goes out and is like, I don't care. I'm going to sleep with him, whatever. And she goes out. And the other one says, well, I'm staying in the bathroom. I'm, I don't want to be any part of this. And that's where Evelyn finally shows up and kills somebody, where she opens the floor, somehow surprises this girl, cuts her throat, and then pulls the body through the floor. And we don't know why at first, but she leaves blood everywhere. So the other cousin notices that there's no noise coming from the other room and basically says, I want to check on her. And they find that she's dead. And then she starts to have a breakdown when she, because she sees all the blood and understands reasonably that her cousin is probably dead. And so at that point now, the, the record exec is like, oh, OK, uh, something's wrong here. He's like, lock the door. I'm going to go next door and, and see if anybody else is having problems. So uh, he goes and he finds the carpenter, the carpenter who um, I the carpenter who's I don't remember why he's outside, but basically this is their exchange about. I can't remember if this is before the preacher is killed or not, but basically the preacher also gets killed. And when the preacher gets killed, we hear Evelyn yell away Satan. So now we're definitely oh, going into go. the, yeah, yeah now we're moving in. yeah. way into it. Even though again, the daughter, there's been no indication of satanic, anything outside of her reading the Bible. So even that could be a misinterpretation of something because that could be Evelyn laying her thing onto whatever the daughter was doing. So again, to your point, we don't know that the daughter was a Satanist. So I don't want to judge the daughter too harshly. Maybe it was just, <laughs> maybe she was praying to a Wiccan spirit of some kind. Maybe it wasn't Satan. But anyway, this is where the, the record exec meets up with the uh, preacher about what's going on. I've got to warn the others. Please don't leave me alone. I've got to. But... Chain lock the door behind me. Back in a few minutes. And don't go in there. Hey, get out. 
that here screaming? There's been another accident. What? Where? Well, the girl in my room. She disappeared. There must have been some kind of struggle because of blood everywhere. Where? Just now. We need to let everybody know. Well, wasn't your door locked? I could have sworn I locked the door myself. Lightning knocked the tree down. It's blocked the road away back. I'll tell the girl and her husband number four. on the way. Oh, they'd better get here soon. I'm sure he'll be all right. Something else has happened. Uh, There's a girl missing. Something's going on around here. You need to keep your door locked and keep your eyes open. I'll be back later to check on you. There's a guy named Crenshaw two doors down if you need anything. And don't open this door unless you know who it is. All right? So see what I mean? I, I, the, they're acting intelligently. You know, they're, yeah. they're, he's saying, don't open the door unless you know who it is. There's that guy's name. That's who he is. Here, She asks twice who's there when he doesn't answer. Like, that stuff is intelligent, which is just so unusual in this film that is handling Evelyn so badly as far as a killer. So at this point, they the the... Uh, the carpenter's like, you know what? I'm splitting. He's like, I'm, I'd rather sleep in my truck than stay here, which I'm like, yeah, that's what I would have said by now. But he's like, well, the only problem with my truck is it doesn't have a bathroom, so I better go before I leave. And it so happens that when he sits on the toilet to go to the bathroom, Evelyn starts to come out of the trap door. And he sees her, stomps the thing down, and then grabs his hammer and nails and nails the door shut. Where I'm like, Jesus, this is exactly what somebody would do. Who like they got a carpenter? He went exactly for the tools and he hammers the thing down. And now he knows that something's up. Like now it's very clear that this is not accidents. That there is something going on. And just the thing where he immediately stomps on the door and then hammers it shut. I'm like, this is fucking great. Because again. Those things are good. That's stuff that in movies like this, normally characters don't do. It would have been that, oh, he was wiping his ass and she comes out of the thing somehow stealthy and silently and then kills him. And it would have been a joke because he died with his pants around his ankles. But instead, he immediately seals off her entry into the room and then goes to find the guy and tell him what he found. Because now, oh, and this is this is right where the preacher is killed. I remember because after the preacher is when she went to the next cabin because they were next to each other. And so he goes to, to warn the preacher, opens the door, sees blood everywhere just like before. No body, though, and figures out, okay, well, then now this is a murderer that's running around here and the preacher's dead. And so he runs to get the, uh, oh, and in the meantime, a uh, uh, record exec guy goes back, finds the girl and says, hey, um, just so you know, I'm actually not a record exec. I'm an advertising marketing guy. So I kind of lied because I figured it was a quick way to get you in bed. Sorry about that. And she gets all pissed. And he's like, sorry, I, you know, I didn't know we were going to be stuck here with a murderer. But basically, so the other girl was right. The dead girl was right. He was lying. He was just trying to get them both in the sack. And, you know, now he confesses to it because, well, they're probably going to be dead soon. Uh, so then the, the carpenter Crenshaw comes and finds him. And they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. Who's there? Crenshaw. I found out how they've been getting in, and they hadn't been in the front door. I'll come and show you. Jeez, look at this. to warn the others. No need to warn the preacher. He's dead. You know who's doing it? I think it's the old lady. Okay. Let's go find her. Tanya? We found where she's getting in. Do you hear me? I've got to go, but I'll be back. But you promised not to leave me. 
I've got to. Now you'll be safe. Just don't panic. So now they have a plan, and their plan is that they go and they nail all the trapdoors down, except the ones on both ends. So they find that there's one at the end of the cabins, at, that's the end of the tunnel, and there's one that's inside in the, you know, like the office or whatever. That's the entrance. And so their plan is, okay, uh, let's nail all the ones shut so there's only the one way in and one way out so we can keep track of where she's going. Now, in the meantime, um, the sheriff... Because they called in and said, you know, something's going on. The sheriff was suspicious. So he's like, I'm going to go check this thing out. But as he's coming, he hits into the tree that's down. So he can't drive in. So he's on foot. So it's taking him a while to get there. So like I said, they go through. They uh, they they go to warn the husband and wife. Uh, but when they go in, the, oh, so they go in to warn them. And they say, hey, you know, this woman's running around. We're going to nail this thing shut. Don't let anybody in. So they, they say they nail it down. They leave. But Evelyn was already in the room and she was hiding. So she comes out, kills them both. So now the husband and wife are dead. Uh, but now she can't get out. So she has to kind of sneak her way back to the, uh, the you know, to the office or wherever to get back into her tunnels. So then they get into the office and at this point they think that she must be down there. They don't know that she was in the husband and wife's room. So they think she's in the tunnels already. So mm -hmm. they basically are coming up with a plan where they think they can get her. And this is the plan. And this is the part where the carpenter says to me, what is, what is the most logical? The carpenter always comes up with the practicality, which is why I love him so much. And I'm sorry that he died. But his response is what my response would be. Maybe she's trapped down there. We've got to go save her. You mean we got to go down there after her? We have to. It's her or it's us. Come on, let's go back to the cabin. Why don't we just wait and let the Lord go down there and get her? Shit, they are the pros. Let them boys go down there. Look, we've got to get to her before she gets to us. And get my ass killed by some old crazy white woman? Come on. Right, Carpenter's got it right. Fuck this. Let the cops do it. But the ad man talks him into it because he basically says... Well, what happens if she gets out and kills uh, Tanya or she gets one of us? And so eventually they talk, you know, he talks him into it. And so they're coming from opposite ends. And we see the carpenter is going along and Evelyn gets the drop on him and ends up cutting off his hand and then killing him, which really bummed me out. And at that point, the sheriff arrives. And right before they went into the tunnels, the ad man gave Tanya the keys to his car and said, All right, if, if I'm not back in like 10 minutes, just leave. Get out of here. So he's not a complete shitbag. Like he basically gives her the ability to just leave with no way to guarantee she won't just run on immediately. So they do make him into more than just a sex crazed asshole. They do give him some depth enough to be like, OK, no, no, this is bad. And if you need to get out, then get out. And so she goes to try to start the car. The car won't start. But luckily, the sheriff shows up and she's like, this woman's killing everybody. He's like, God damn it. I knew it. And he pulls out his gun and Tanya shows him the entrance of the tunnel. He's like, all right. He's like, stay up here. Lock everything. Make sure and we'll put a thing over this and stay up here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to get her. So he goes into the tunnel and so he goes into the tunnel. And he finally, he finds Evelyn, who somehow manages to somewhat fight him, which is ridiculous. It makes no sense. But she's, she's kind of fighting him. And right before he showed up, she starts seeing these visions of her daughter standing in the, in the tunnel like a zombie. And the daughter's like, kill them all, kill them all, kill them all, whatever. And she looks like an exorcist version of the... And we've seen none of this. This is like six minutes of the movie is left. And suddenly the daughter's now appearing. So you don't know whether it's an apparition or what, but we haven't seen any of this. We've heard the voice, but we haven't seen any of the rest of this. So Evelyn manages to knock the sheriff down somehow. She goes to kill him with the sickle, but overswings. And the sickle somehow goes through a wood beam even though it makes no sense that she could possibly swing it with enough force to do that. But the uh, sharp end sticking down, at which point the bean comes loose from the wall, knocks her down, and happens to slice her throat open. And so now she's dead. So the sheriff's like, oh, good, you're dead. So he leaves, <laughs> and he goes up to the room, and he finds Tanya, and Tanya says, well, who else is here? And the sheriff's like, nobody, it's just us. At which point we hear a noise, and we look over, and the ad man comes through the door, and he says, yeah, I got knocked out for a minute, but I'm okay. And so I thought, uh oh, why is he suddenly missing, and now he's shown up? But they all get in the sheriff's car, or they all get in um, uh, the ad man's car. He manages to get it started, and they drive to where the tree is, get out, have to go around the tree because the tree is blocking the road, get into the sheriff's car, and then for some reason we see a flash of the daughter walking around in the woods. And I'm thinking, what is this? 
So they, they drive away. And so I'm waiting for, and, and Tanya looked a little weird. So then I thought it was going to be that Tanya was possessed, but it isn't. She's just so traumatized that she looks like shit, which is fine. They just, her makeup looks very similar to the daughter. So I was waiting for some kind of last minute spiritual possession thing, but they drive past the sign to the hotel, which then just turns on. And then we see the daughter just standing there staring. And then the credits come up. So the sheriff, Tanya and the ad man all got out. Everybody else is dead. And somehow the daughter is now alive and is reactivated the hotel sign. And then the movie ends. So I have no idea what we were supposed to take from that because there's so little of it in the rest of the movie, but that would imply that Evelyn was hearing her daughter, whether she actually heard the other voices in the beginning, or was that her daughter screwing with her from the casket? I don't know. So it's not a great ending, and yeah, there's it kind of it kind of throws things off. You know? Yeah, it's it's not great. From what I read, that was kind of an insertion where they didn't think the movie was going to work if there wasn't more of a horrific element, and they kind of pushed this thing into it. So what I'm wondering is if the original version of this movie, everything was basically her being crazy, and not any of the supernatural stuff. That's my guess based on what I read, but. The movie is worth watching because the characters are written pretty well for this movie. This type of movie does not usually have characters that are this well written. And I'm not saying, look, it's it's not Remains of the Day or anything like that. I'm not saying, you know, we're talking about high level writing. But for what the rest of the movie is, which is a junkie slasher, the characters outside of Evelyn, who is just nothing to her. I mean, she is barely even speaks but all the motel guests all come across as actual people, which is unusual for this type of film. And they act like people would act in these situations where by and large, unless they're acting incorrectly out of complete fear, which even then Tanya, I kept thinking Tanya was going to do something stupid because she was basically in shock. But even Tanya sticks to the, the the safe plan, checks the window, makes sure she knows who it is, asks who's there. I didn't clip all of it, but these characters multiple times don't just open their door or turn their backs on something without cause, which elevates the movie. I'm not saying it makes it a good movie, but it's unusual. And so, and like that little exchange with the heaven and hell, like there's a couple of those in the movie where Crenshaw, I really like yeah, the seems, Carpenter. There seems to be like good writing but in what is overall a bad movie. Yeah, it's like they took interesting characters or potentially interesting characters and put them into a terrible scenario. In other words, they didn't know how to make a good slasher film, but the writer knew how to write people. And so he tried. And that that is a thing. I mean, sure, you can know how to write people and not write a good thriller. And that's what I feel like. This is one of those cases where a lot of times they say, well, when you see more than one writer, it's a bad sign. This probably would have been a good time to have somebody who knew how to write the scenes for a slasher to be interesting, coupled with somebody who knew how to write the characters. You know, there's people, sometimes there's writers, one person does the dialogue and the other person does the rest, that type of thing, or they bring a script doctor in to polish things up. That's what this needed, was a person who knew slashers better to say, okay, you got the characters. Let's make these situations they're in make more sense and be more interesting. Because to go 45 minutes in a slasher and nobody's died, and Evelyn seems like she's more of a 13-year-old who just wants to annoy people than actually kill anybody... I don't know what mental illness that is. Maybe that exists, but it doesn't make for an interesting slasher film. So it's an interesting movie. It's not necessarily a good one, but it sticks out because the characters are interesting. So it's free to watch on Tubi with ads. I think it's also on Prime Video, but I watched it on Tubi with the ads. And uh, it's cleaned up because Vinegar Syndrome just re-released it. So I would say, as an as an early 80s slasher, I think that the character elements make it worth watching. Probably never watch it again. It's a one-time deal. But I'm not used to characters in a low-budget southern slasher film being written like this. Where I actually was... I was bummed out when the carpenter got killed. I really hoped he made it out because I liked him the best of, of everybody. I liked the preacher, too, but I knew he was going to die. I mean, that was, that was telegraphed so clearly. Uh, right away that he was going to die. But I really was hoping that the carpenter would make it out because I thought he was practical and he reacted well. And I didn't, I didn't hate anybody in the film, even the ad guy who was scummy and what he was trying to do. He seems quite astute once things go wrong. Yes. That's what I'm saying is the level of intelligence for slasher characters 
is is noteworthy. So that's the reason to watch it. You're not going to watch it for the gore. It's fine. It's often silly looking, but it's fine. Uh, the score is bonkers, so it's not that, but it's it's different. <laughs> and and the the Evelyn character, the slasher makes no sense. Makes no sense. Is never convincing as a slasher. Not a particularly good portrayal or anything like that but it's the characters the motel guests are what make it and the yeah. fact that the sheriff is always just ready to pounce he doesn't ever buy that she's not somehow involved he just yeah. can't do anything about it which makes sense and then as soon as he gets a reason he's like fuck it and he runs right back to try to get somebody so that's what i mean about there's a lot of intelligence in this thing so mm-hmm. that's the reason to watch especially because you can watch it for free outside of that you know no it's, it's not a classic or anything like that but it's interesting it, it sticks out i wonder if he wrote watching. i wonder if he wrote any other slasher films he wrote the, all the movies apparently this was a father and son duo they all worked on the same seven they both worked on the same seven films so It'd i don't know if any of the other ones were slashers. if any of the other ones are uh, if, it's, it's, if it's a general fault of the writing the characterization is good but the the, the slasher aspect of it is weak well, one of the movies is an alien movie called The Aurora Encounter in 1897. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see what else this person has. Nacho Chihuahua. So I'm guessing that's not a slasher. Renfro's Christmas. That looks like a Christmas film, like a Hallmark film. The St. Tammy Miracle. Uh, no, that looks like a basketball film of all things. Oh, sorry. St. Tammany, not St. Tammy. Video Murders. Okay, that's a murder one. Uh, video murders. David Lee Shepard who desperately wants to work in the video business is luring hookers into his hotel room so they can videotape himself strangling. Okay, well I might watch that. <laughs> I mean the the cover art for video murders is hysterical. It's a guy coming out of a TV and strangling a woman who looks like she's trying to take a glamour shot, which is remarkable. Uh, Soggy Bottom USA is local share. No, that looks like a is that a comedy? I don't know. That doesn't look like a murder thing. That just looks like a sheriff who's in over his head in a southern town. So obviously these guys did southern films. Uh, let's see. Charge of the Model T's. Uh, uh, not some kind of war movie or something, what it looks like. Uh, creature from Black Lake. That sounds like a creature feature, just based on the title. Yeah, that's a Bigfoot movie. And finally, Where the Red Fern Grows is a heartwarming and adventurous tale for all ages about a young boy and his quest for his own red bone hunting dogs. So apparently he didn't do too many horror films. I think that's where we go with that. So I will probably watch video murders at some point, but I would say as, as a final recommendation, I would say if you're into early 80s slashers, I would watch this because it's free and because it is unique in the way the characters function. So that would be my recommendation on it, but just don't, don't expect it to be anything past that. The, the murderer stuff itself is pretty underwhelming. But still, uh, the fact that I got, whenever I could pull interesting clips, I, wa- I like to talk about a movie. So I, was, I wasn't expecting much. I was hoping for a, a Looney Tunes bad movie with a crazy old woman. And instead, I got a boring old woman and interesting characters, who most of whom died. So... <laughs> you know, you roll the dice. Sometimes you come up with, uh, you know, snake eyes, and some come. Sometimes you come up with uh, sevens. I don't know. So, and that's it. That's all I have for you. And uh, on that note, uh, that's it. So, whatever you do with your weekend, have a good one, and we will talk to you again next week. Visit ozonenightmare.com to subscribe to new episodes, browse through our back catalog, or to find links to support the show. Follow at Ozone Nightmare on Twitter for the latest episode postings and other show information. If 280 characters just isn't enough, you can always email us, theozonenightmare at gmail.com. The opening theme for the show is provided by Heartbeat Hero. The closing theme is provided by Ogre. Please visit and support these artists using the links in the show notes for each episode. 